Good afternoon. Happy Monday. This is a video that Jeff Gray put out, and I like Jeff Gray. I like Honor Your Oath Civil Rights Investigations. I think he does a darn fine job. I disagree with him on some of his politics, but I agree with him on his desire to further First Amendment rights and to push the boundaries. He seems like an upstanding guy. As far as I know, he has no criminal record. At least he's never been convicted of anything. I know he's been arrested falsely several times, but uh, he seems pretty solid. Anyway, I hope he doesn't take this the wrong way, but I'm going to gently correct him on some of the things he said. First of all, he is auditing outside of uh, Willow Branch Library. He gives us the address and you can see where he's at. This is the Willow Branch Library that he's looking at. You can see the signs and everything like that. And he is in their parking lot. He's in the parking lot of the Willow Branch Library. And you could tell he's in the parking lot of the Willow Branch Library because if I exit this, where I was right there was right here on this dot. It's in their parking lot. That's where I was. So he is on their property. It is in their parking lot. And you're going to say, well, it's still a public forum and great, you know. Who am I to argue with you? I'm just a first year family law attorney, but I'm going to I'm going to present some things to you that you may wish to um, that you may wish to consider. Now, he says that uh, somewhere around in here, uh, he's talk. The gal comes out and says, you can't be here. Uh, it's a code of conduct violation to ask for money. And he says this is a content based speech restriction. Now. Everybody remembers their forum analysis, I'm sure, but just to go over it with you, uh, there's two places where the forum analysis really requires things to be content neutral. And if it's content based, it's most likely going to be unconstitutional. And those two forum analysis are the traditional public forum, the things that, you know, just since time immemorial have been held out for the use of the public to whatever kind of uh, First Amendment expression they want to do, and designated public forums. But not just any designated public forums, because the Supreme Court was kind enough to muddy the waters around designated public forums. There's two kinds. There's one kind where the government says, we are giving you this area to be a traditional public forum, like a free speech zone. And then there's a, the other kind of designated public forum, which is where some kinds of speech are allowed in that particular forum. Like, uh, for example, at a town hall meeting, which is a classic limited public forum, where you can speak within the time limits that the, that the government sets about the topic that the government has opened up for conversation. And they may restrict things like signs or banners or, or whatever bullhorns, things like that. That's a limited public forum. So I'm going to be a little bit more precise than the Supreme Court has been in the past, and some courts currently are, and I'm going to distinguish between designated public forums and limited public forums in that a designated public forum is requires the government to basically treat that spot as a traditional public forum, limited public forum, means that for the things that the government does allow you to speak about, that's fine. You get you get all the protections of the traditional public forum. But for everything else, it's a non-public forum. I hope that makes sense. So anyway, uh, case law on uh, on a traditional public forum, it's, you know, it's there. Uh, there is uh, Hefron versus the International Society for Krishna Consciousness. This is where uh, the Krishnas, as they so often want to do, wanted to walk around a state fair and solicit. Uh, they would sell their little religious tracts for money or just ask for donations. And the state, the government, had a had restrictions in place on where you could do it. You had to have a booth. You had to pay for, you had to rent a stall, a booth, whatever you want to call it, in order to do it. And the Supreme Court, for whatever reason, thought that this wasn't a content-based restriction. So just think about that. 
I'm not saying it's not a content-based restriction. I personally think it is a content-based restriction, uh, as you can tell from, uh, or as you could see from Reed versus Town of Gilbert, Arizona, that basically if you have to look at the content of what they're doing to determine whether or not it's restricted, that's a content-based restriction. Now, Word versus Rock Against Racism is another one that you might want to look at. And Word versus Ward versus Rock Against Racism. Racism says the principal inquiry in determining content neutrality in speech cases generally and in time, place, and manner restrictions in particular is whether the government has adopted a regulation of speech because of disagreement with the message it conveys. Now, does that clarify things for you? It sure doesn't clarify it for me as to why in Heffron versus International Society for Krishna Consciousness in a traditional public forum analysis, a restriction against a specific kind of speech, i.e. solicitation, is prohibited, but the Krishnas were free to walk around and talk to people about their political or religious beliefs. Sounds like a, sounds like a content-based restriction to me, but this case exists, and so you should know about it. But the next question that we have to ask ourselves is what happens in a non-public forum or in a limited public forum where the standard is much less, where the standard becomes a reasonable in this standard. Is there a legitimate government uh, interest in, or is there a legitimate government interest? And does the uh, particular restriction on speech rationally relate to that legitimate government interest? And is it reasonable? It's really a reasonable thing. Oh yeah, and it has to be viewpoint neutral. Now viewpoint neutral is not content neutral. Viewpoint neutral, I've probably used this analogy before, but for example, content-based restriction would be no, no protesting ab about abortion, for or against it, right? That's content-based. Viewpoint-based would be something like no protesting against abortions. That's a viewpoint-based restriction. They have to actually know which side of the argument you're on, right? So in United States versus Coquinda, there were... There was there were uh, people soliciting on a on a sidewalk, but it wasn't a sidewalk more. It was a it was a walkway that was internal. So, for example, in this particular case, it would be something like this little walkway right here that led from the parking lot to the building. That's where that's where they were soliciting in Coquinda. Now, in Coquinda, it was a post office, not a library. And the Supreme Court said it's, it's got to be reasonable and it's got to be viewpoint neutral. That's, that's the limitation. Reasonable, viewpoint neutral. So the post office was A-OK -okay in saying no solicitation on this sidewalk because it was reasonable and it was viewpoint neutral. And the reasonableness of it was, well, it was too hard to let some people do it and other people not do it and to permit some people, not other people. So they just had a blanket prohibition against it because it distracted people and it, it took up a lot of time and, and effort from, from the post office to manage it. And then you have, once again, the Krishnas, the International Society for Krishna Consciousness versus Lee, not to be confused with Lee versus the International Society for Krishna Consciousness. In this, the Supreme Court said that uh, a prohibition against solicitation in an airport, it's a non-public forum, and it just has to be reasonable and viewpoint neutral. And it was. And now you're going to say, well, yeah, uh, <laughs> Mr. Guy, uh, Jeff Gray was outside. So are we looking at are we looking at a non-public forum style of analysis? Are we looking at a uh, traditional public forum? Because remember, he's on a sidewalk. And well, you have, again, the International Society for Krishna Consciousness, the Miami version versus the Metropolitan Dade County, Florida and uh, the Miami International Airport. And this is a 11th Circuit Court of Appeals decision. And they said, oh yeah, we're applying Lee or International Society of Krishna Consciousness versus Lee to the outside of the airport as well. It's, it's not just inside the airport. 
the the surrounding property that belongs to the airport, the parking lots and walkways and things like that are also subject to it. Now, what is a library? Is a library a traditional public forum, a designated public forum, a limited public forum? And I'm breaking those two up, designated and limited. Or is it a non-public forum? Well, you know, the United States Supreme Court had the perfect opportunity to answer this question in the United States versus American Library Association Incorporated. But they punted. They chose not to. So because Mr. Gray is in Florida, I found a Florida case. This is out of the Northern District of Florida. It's a 2022 decision. So it's going to have all the juiciest, most up-to-date law. And what does it say about a library? What is a library? A library is a designated public forum. Wait, wait, wait. What does that mean? A designated public forum. Well, courts have also used the term limited public forum to describe public libraries. So which is it? Is it the, well, designated and limited or both designated public forums, but which one is it? Well, because a library is a designated public forum, it is obligated to permit the public to exercise rights that are consistent with the nature of the library and consistent with the government's intent on intent designating the library as a public forum, but other activities need not be tolerated. And then it goes on to say the state, this is my favorite quote of all time, no less than the, an owner of a private property has the power to preserve the property under its control for the use to which it is lawfully dedicated. Now they cite to Perry Education Association, who was citing to Adderley versus Florida. Any restriction on a person's first, on the person's first amendment right to access the library, therefore must be reasonable and viewpoint neutral. They cannot be designated to suppress expression based on a viewpoint expressed. So reasonable and viewpoint neutral, that's the limited public forum test. It's the exact same test as for a non-public forum, i.e. U.S. versus Kakinda, International Society for Krishna Consciousness versus Lee, and ISCON Miami versus the Metropolitan Dade County, Florida. So what does that mean? It means that the library most likely can, most likely can prevent or uh, have a policy prohibiting panhandling on library grounds, most likely. Now, I'm personally glad that Mr. Gray did not get arrested, that the police didn't come. I think that's awesome. But I just want to, you know, I, I've given you the citations. Do with them as you will. I'm just a first year family law attorney. But uh, I hope I have cleared this up a little bit if you are curious as to which way a court will probably go in determining whether or not Mr. Gray has the right to panhandle there. Now, once again, once you do get off of the uh, once you get off of library property, once you get, for example, onto the sidewalk that borders the street and is indistinguishable like this sidewalk here. It's indistinguishable from any other sidewalk like this one right here. Then it's definitely a public property. And then it could go either way. It could go the Heffron versus International Society for Krishna Consciousness way. Or it can be content based under the Reed versus Town of Gilbert, Arizona uh, analysis and uh, be unconstitutional. So. You know, you do take a bit of a chance still on the sidewalk, depending on the on the particular prohibition against panhandling. So be aware, be careful. Thanks for watching and have a great day.